Hey guys, welcome. So another 3D printing related video. This time I will show you the upgrades I've made uh, for my industry. Actually, I'm planning another batch of upgrades and this one is mostly quality of life changes and ease of access to say so uh, to handle my prints and my daily stuff with the printer more easily. While the next batch will be about uh, trying to dramatically increase the print quality. If you're interested, stay with me. So this is my industry. I bought it like three and a half months ago and I spent the first two months learning the basics of 3D printing. Now lately I have started to realize the shortcomings of this printer although I cannot say a bad word about it because of its price and because the huge community it has. So it was obvious that I will need to upgrade it. So first I started with the real cheap 3D printable upgrades that are just simple and easy to print, even with the stock printer itself. So first of all, here's this little tool holder. So technically it's not really an upgrade for the printer itself, but uh, it's like convenience. It holds all the tools that came with the printer and so it is real handy. Also for a newbie it was quite a complicated print and posed me a little challenge. But in the end it totally worth it. The next one is the filament guide that you can see here. And normally all the filament guides are just designed in a way that you need to somehow uh, screw them into the aluminium. But this one instead is even more simple. You can just pull it right here and that's it. You don't need any screws or something like that to secure it. It also moves together with the filament holder if you decide to move it. A no-brainer upgrade, because, especially because I have children, is this cover. Simply because otherwise one of them just can come here and touch the circuit. And uh, even though this is not high voltage, I really don't like the idea of children touching the circuit of a printer. Okay, so these were the simple upgrades. Now time for some advanced stuff. That's a case for a Raspberry Pi, which is running Octoprint. So Octoprint is a real handy tool. Once you have it set up and running, you don't really have to touch this uh, awkward control panel anymore. It just takes over the whole operation of the printer. And now with the latest few versions of Cura, you can just uh, handle the whole printing process right from your PC without dealing with SD cards or whatever. So it was also a no-brainer that uh, with time I will need to invest in a Raspberry Pi and have Octopi up and running. It is also nice because uh, it allows you to remotely monitor your printer, like literally if you have a camera. Talking about camera, as you can see I have a mount here for a camera. This is just an old webcam I used. Uh, this is a Logitech C270. So it's not a full, full HD cam, it's just a simple HD camera and it doesn't have advanced stuff like infrared lighting or something like that. But it's still good enough because it was easy to connect to the Raspberry Pi via USB and uh, it's useful for monitoring the prints. I can also make time lapses with it, although the quality is not that good, but for now it will do it. But you can see here is a modular stand uh, designed especially for this camera. It turned out that uh, quite a lot of people have it. Because it is a cheap camera and getting nowadays replaced by newer cameras, a lot of people have it around somewhere in a shelf or, or in a drawer. And uh, there was this guy who designed this whole modular uh, mount for especially for this camera. And it is really nice, you can just use it to have the right angle for your time-lapse or your preferences. What you can see on top of it is a simple LED light mount. Uh, this is actually the same module 
that is uh, holding the camera but uh, I printed another one and uh, created a small uh, USB driven LED, LED light for it so as you will see soon this light is just a protoboard with some uh, simple LEDs soldered to it and a real simple circuit involving a single uh, resistor and uh, micro USB port. Now the micro USB port is good because uh, using the micro USB cable I can just directly power it from the Raspberry Pi. One shortcoming of this design is that it is so simple that it, it uh, doesn't really involve a switch. So actually when the print is running the light is uh, lighting the print bed even when it is daylight and it's fully lit anyway. And we'll have to work on that. This is like a prototype I've uh, literally made two or three days ago. But it's working fine. Also because of this design I can uh, extend the light with additional LEDs although I don't need it. What I really wanted to have is just the printer sitting in a dark room uh, lit only enough to remotely monitor what's happening. I'm not uh, planning to do any time lapses at the moment. Okay, so this is the circuit for this simple light. You can create it yourself. Actually, I made it from leftover parts that I had laying around. One no-brainer upgrade I forgot to mention before is this cover for that uh, intake vent. It is useful because uh, once you start uh, using the printer heavily, it will occasionally happen that uh, some debris or, or small parts of filament or printed material just fall down from the print bed and uh, ride into the intake vent. Although the filament itself is non-conductive, it can still cause problems by simply jamming the cooler. Regarding all these cables you see here, the black one is for the camera, the blue one is connecting the printer to the Pi, this white one is for powering the LED light, and finally this is just a LAN cable simply because where the printer is located uh, at the moment it's a place which is not really covered properly by Wi-Fi but uh, for most people this is not necessary but I really wanted to have a stable connection for Octopi monitoring especially because I decided to take uh, things one step further and uh, wire Octopi to my home assistant installation so I can see printer status and room temperature and humidity and whatnot on the same screen. So I really wanted to have this just be a stable part of my uh, global network infrastructure. So one final upgrade you are not seeing here at the moment because I'm not using it right now is uh, having a mirror bed for this. Just let me show it. So here's this cheap custom-made mirror that I can use as a replacement for the heat pad if it turns out to be needed. It's not needed for now, at least not for PLA and uh, I've still yet to experiment with other materials. But I have it and it's proven to be useful. But uh, for PLA my general experience is just simply slows down printing. Actually it was mentioned in my previous video that uh, during my first few prints it was quite useful but uh, later on it turned out that handled carefully the default print bed surface of the industry is quite an adhesion beast so you don't really need to uh, replace it. So for now I'm sticking to this one. Regarding future upgrades, I have plans for using a BL touch, uh, getting a small nozzle, integrating my printer with Amazon Alexa and stuff like that. But for now, I really don't want to go into details. Let that be material for another video. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit like. If you want to help my channel and see more of my content, hit subscribe. 
If you want to check out behind the scenes and want to know more about me, then follow me on social media. You can find the links here. Thank you again and see you next time.